like we talked about earlier, that remember you're going to go up to the pool and use four of your five senses uh, before you do anything else. You're going to, number one, look at the water, look at the pool overall, see if there's any blatant issues going on, any cracks, any, any uh, d bad discoloration, things like that. Then you're going to listen for uh, any sounds from the pump or the filtration uh, area if it's nearby. Uh, if there's any odd sounds, you want that. Uh, you want to investigate that. Then you're going to want to smell the area to make sure you're not smelling any kind of chlorine issues or any other odd odors. And then finally, you're going to, you're going to feel if there's any kind of discoloration. You're going to want to be able to to feel it to see if it's a an algae or a, a metal base. So what we're going to start doing right now using a K2005 complete kit. We're going to be doing a chlorine test and a pH test using our 2000 series comparator block. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that you rinse it out thoroughly at least three times before you take your sample. And when you take your sample, the best thing to do is hold the comparator block upside down and go down about 18 inches that I can just about make and bring up your sample of water. You want to stay away from any return lines because you don't want that concentrated uh, treatment chemical that if it's there to influence your test. And the first thing you're going to do is make sure that your sample is up to the top line for chlorine. And in this case, it's a nine millimeter sample. So I'm just going to flick off a couple. There we go. The first reagent you're going to add is five drops of reagent number one. This is a buffer that's going to change the pH of your sample. It's not going to change the color at all inside the test cell. Always make sure you recap the reagents after you've added them. Then you're going to add five drops of DPD number two. Hold the bottle always straight up and down. Then take your cap, cap it, and invert it a couple times. That's all you need to do. You don't need to shake it. In fact, never shake it, but always just invert it a couple times. And when you're done, then you want to hold it straight, eye level, perpendicular to the ground, and match a color. I don't know if you can come around here and match that color. Okay. Okay, and it looks to me about a five part per million uh, free chlorine reading. Okay, which is good. A little bit on the high side. Four to six is okay. It's ideal range, but four is probably better for a pool that's not used a whole lot. Now to get your combined chlorine reading, you're going to add five drops of DPD number three. Now you're adding five drops of DP number three to get a total chlorine reading. Ideally, you don't want that, you don't want that color to be any different. Let's clean it a little bit. Cap it and invert it. Now, if you look at the color, it's about the same. So that means there's no combined chlorine. The free reading and the total reading are exactly the same, which is what you want, okay? And when you're done, ideally, you should dump your sample, a good service technician should dump their sample off to the side on the grass or in a bucket. Uh, some of them will put it back in the ground. I just throw it back there. It's not gonna hurt anything. So you rinse it out again. And the next test you're gonna do is a pH test. You want a 44 mil sample. I'm going to add five drops of phenol red, number four. Straight up and down. Always make sure you recap your reagents. Cap and invert the mix. 
and match your color. Now you can see this color matches real close to the 7.4, which is a good pH. 7.4 to 7.6 is ideal. That's what you want. If we had a high pH or low pH, you would either do an acid demand test or base demand test to figure how much product you need to add to correct that pH. But we don't need to do this in this case. This is a good pH. Dump out your sample and rinse it out again. The next test we're going to do is the total alkalinity test. So you get your sample water again. But this time, all you need is a 25 mil sample. There we go. You add two drops of thiosulfate reagent that will neutralize any chlorine in the sample and won't turn your sample color anything. It'll still stay colorless. Then you're going to add five drops of your total alkalinity reagent. Now instead of capping, all you need to do is to swirl around a little bit and it goes a nice green color. Then you're going to take reagent number nine, which is a very weak form of sulfuric acid, and you're going to add it drop by drop until it goes to a nice red color. And the easiest way to do this is that if you're right-handed, you want to swirl with your right hand and drop with your left. That's the correct endpoint color. Actually, you want to look down from the top into the bottom. Okay, that took eight drops, so you have an 80 part per million total alkalinity in this pool water. And that's good. 80 to 120 is the ideal range. The next test is a calcium hardness test. Again, it's a 25 mil sample. Now with this test, you're going to be adding 20 drops of reagent number 10. And the reason you're adding so many drops is that you have to change the pH of your sample to get the right color development. One, two, three, four, five, six. 1920. Then five drops of your indicator. Now the calcium hardness indicator is pretty thick. And when you drop it into the sample, it's probably gonna fall as a solid drop to the bottom. Don't worry about it. Mix it around and your sample goes a, a reddish color. But you gotta make sure the entire reagent, entire indicator is mixed. And then you add reagent number 12 Drop by drop until it goes to a pretty sky blue color. There we go. It took 43 drops. 43 times 10 is 430 parts per million. Now, if you could get a close-up of this, if you look down, you're going to see little purple dots inside that sample. 
What that is is magnesium hydroxide forming because the pH is so high. Don't worry about it. You look beyond the drops. Uh, you look for the total blueness. And do we have cyanuric acid in here? Yes. Okay. Next test we're going to do is cyanuric acid. And this kind of test is a little different because it's called a turbidimetric test. You're going to look for the cloudiness that develops in the sample and then read where the water level is. So the first thing you do is fill your collection tube up to the first line. Then you're going to take reagent number 13 and add it up to the second line. Put the cap back on and shake it for 30 seconds. Now what, what's happening here is that in reagent number 13, it's a product called melamine. And melamine reacts and combines with the cyanuric acid to form a cloudiness that's proportional to the amount of cyanuric acid in the sample. So what you're doing by, by shaking it is to agitate it and you're mixing it thoroughly and completely. That's good. Now you flip up the cap and you can see in the bottom of this tube is a black dot. Okay, I'm going to add this reagent until that black dot disappears. When it disappears, you stop and read on the side, this flange here, where the water level is, and that's your cyanuric acid level. Okay, my water level stopped below 100 parts per million, which means it has well over 100 parts per million cyanuric acid, which is not good. 30 to 50 is the ideal range for cyanuric acid in most situations. Right. What we're going to do now is determine the water balance of this particular pool based on the readings that we got. And using the Taylor watergram, what you do is you locate on the outer white ring where your calcium harness reading is and, excuse me, your total alkalinity reading, and opposite that, line up where your hardness reading was. So we had an 80 alkalinity and about a 430 hardness reading. And then on this blue dial, where that little dot is right there, you're going to go to where the pH was, at 7.4. Then on the outer blue dial on this side, you go to the temperature of the water. Now, this pool water is pretty warm, so I would say it's about 85 degrees. So you can see where, on this number, the water balance value is about 0 0.25. Now, the instructions on how to do this, too, are also on the back of the water gram, but a 0 0.25... Uh, Saturation index number tells me that the water's in balance. You need to be between a negative 0.3 and a positive 0.5 to be considered in balance. Now, because this is a positive number, it's, going to, it's leaning towards scale forming, but it isn't quite there yet because it's not past 0.5. The only issue we, that we found so far with this pool water is that the cyanuric acid level is very, very high. 30 to 50 is the ideal range. Anything over 50 is kind of a waste of the product because it doesn't do anything extra. It doesn't provide more protection. And in fact, when it can get even higher, you might see something called chlorine lock, which is, in other words, the cyanuric acid isn't working with the chlorine and actually is preventing chlorine from doing the job it's supposed to do.